This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management for this week's market update. This week on the Street of Dreams, all three major averages finished at record closing levels. We had a Dow Wow during the session on Friday as the blue chip average traded above 44,000 for the first time ever. While the S&P 500 briefly traded above 6,000 for its own milestone. The tech-heavy Nasdaq composite also set an intraday record high. There was a strong week across the board for stocks, largely due to Wednesday's huge rally following Trump's victory in the presidential election. The S&P 500 finished up 4.66%, with the Dow close behind at 4.61. Both indices notched their best week since November of 2023. The Nasdaq outdid even those moves, advancing almost 5 and 3 quarter percent while the small company stock benchmark, the Russell 2000, surged an amazing 8.57%. Now, despite these big weekly moves, the standout in our portfolio is still the Alarian MLP Pipeline Index, which is up a whopping 42% year-to-date, and they just declared an increased dividend for the quarter. Now, investors are generally viewing Republican-controlled government as more favorable due to expectations for deregulation potential mergers and acquisitions, and proposed tax cuts. However, Treasury yields rose on concerns over the large federal deficit, and increased tariffs have sparked fears of an uptick in inflation. Bond vigilantes are pricing in higher growth, higher inflation, and government borrowing, and have been pushing rates up over the last couple of sessions. However, these same bond vigilantes, they don't work at the Federal Reserve, and stocks got another boost from the Fed this week as the Federal, as the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates by a quarter of 1% on Thursday. Fed Chair Jerome Powell noted he's feeling good about the economy during a press conference following the change. When asked whether he would resign if requested by President Trump, the Fed Chairman simply said no. He subsequently told reporters that the President doesn't have the power to fire or demote. Now, the only thing I can say with certainty, is that the Fed's chair's term ends in 2026, and the newly elected president's term ends in 2028. However, our terms, as investors, will be for the rest of our lives, and we will have to deal with a host of other uncertainties that come with investing and affect our returns. Volatility is always possible, for any or no reason, and we'll deal with that when it comes. But for now, hey, let's celebrate the record highs in the market and enjoy the fruits of our bountiful portfolio.